How old is the Earth? It's an important question that influences many of our scientific and religious beliefs. And one of the many ways in which scientists investigate the age of the Earth is through radiometric dating. But these methods yield results in the billions of years, far more than the 6,000 years afforded by the chronologies of the Bible. So who's right? In this three-part video series, we're going to investigate radiometric dating. And in this first video, we're going to first of all discuss what radiation is. Before we can understand radiation, we first need to think about atoms. Atoms are the tiny pieces of matter which make up everything that we see, and even some of the things that we can't see, like the air that you and I are breathing right now. Atoms themselves are made of three subatomic particles. Protons are the largest of the subatomic particles. They have a positive charge and are found in the center or nucleus of an atom. Also found in the nucleus are neutrons, but these are electrically neutral. They have no charge. Finally are the electrons. They whiz around the nucleus in special shapes that we call orbitals, and they have a negative charge. Now you might be wondering how you can pack all those positively charged protons together in the nucleus of the atom. Don't like charges repel? Wouldn't they just fly apart? Well, they wouldn't fly apart. And the reason why is because of those neutrons. Now remember, those neutrons are electrically neutral, but they do add mass. And adding mass to this nucleus of the atom allows for a force known as the strong force to hold it all together. So we need a proper balance of protons and neutrons for the atom to be stable. So atoms that have too few or too many neutrons are unstable. Atoms that have more than 83 protons are also unstable. They're simply too big to hold themselves together. And as a result, they decay, they fall apart. They actually shoot pieces of themselves out. So what exactly are these radioactive emissions that are shot out of these atoms? Well, there are three main forms, alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays. Alpha particles consist of two protons and two neutrons. Beta particles consist of an electron. But this isn't one of the electrons that was whizzing around the outside of the atom. What's actually happening here is that one of these protons in the nucleus decays. And when it decays, it turns into a neutron and into an electron that is emitted. And then finally, gamma rays. Gamma rays aren't particles. Instead, they're simply emissions of high energy light. Now, when you think of radioactive material, you might envision some green, glowing, goopy liquid. But the reality is that we're always surrounded by radioactive material. Even some of the atoms in our very own bodies are radioactive, like carbon-14, which is in the food that we eat. But this radioactive material doesn't cause much of a problem because we experience it at such low levels. And this is called background radiation. Radiation becomes more dangerous when you're exposed to a lot of it. The issue here is that these emissions can carry a lot of energy with them. They can act like little bullets that shoot the cells in your body, killing them, or perhaps even worse, mutating your DNA, which can cause cancer. One of the most common radioactive elements, and probably the one with which you're the most familiar, is uranium. Surprisingly, uranium is actually very plentiful. It's more common on Earth than silver and gold are. It's not usually found pure, but it's mixed with lots of other elements to form some minerals. And I'm gonna show you some samples. Uranium has 92 protons, which means it has far more than are needed to just be radioactive. This is one of the primary ores of uranium, known as uraninite. And it's composed of uranium and oxygen linked together. Now, I'm wearing gloves, and it's probably not for the reason you expect. It's not mostly for the radiation. Although alpha rays are actually pretty weak, and that's the type of radiation that uranium emits. In fact, they can be stopped simply by a piece of paper. And so these gloves are actually probably doing a decent job of stopping alpha rays. But uranium is also a heavy metal toxin like lead. So it's best to wear gloves. Here's an extra high purity uranifone crystal. This is a beautiful mineral with its striking yellow color. It contains calcium and also silicon and oxygen, making it a silicate. Now, in case you're wondering, yes, this is actually legal, you can own uranium, especially in the form of minerals. This is torvernite, another uranium mineral. 
it is this kind of greenish film that you see on the rock, which is composed of all of these tiny little crystals. And it gets this beautiful color from the copper, which is contained in it. This is carnitite, another brilliant yellow uranium mineral. And this one is often found in blocks of sandstone, like the one I have right here. It contains potassium, vanadium, and oxygen, in addition to uranium, of course. This is schrokingerite, these brilliant yellow and green spots in rock, yet another brightly colored uranium mineral. This one is a carbonate, so it contains calcium. It also contains sodium, fluorine, and other elements. But it has a special trick up its sleeve. It glows under ultraviolet light. Here you can see that ultraviolet light, which actually has more energy in it than normal light, stimulates this mineral to fluoresce these beautiful green colors. Fascinatingly, radiation has a lot of different uses. We can use it in medicine, for example, in radiation therapy to kill cancers, to generate power in nuclear power plants, as weapons like the atomic bombs, or for dating. And in our next episode, we're going to dive into exactly how radiometric dating is done. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.